rights when Chief Bennett was interacting with demonstrators who were wanting to do things that were not necessarily in accordance with the plan. Uh, in one case, he got them to stop blocking the street. Uh, I think he might have been aided there by a rainstorm uh, that suddenly broke out. Mm -hmm. In another case, uh, the, on the last night of the convention, the demonstrators wanted to leave the park, go around the city. They didn't want to go on the planned route, uh, the parade route, which was out you know, where nobody could see or hear you. They wanted to go through streets that were in use. The police actually turned around and facilitated that, and I thought that was interesting. The, di the dilemma the police have is that we know that when these events occur, there are people who occasionally show up and who are going to turn around and are bound not necessarily on communicating a particular message, but communicating it in a way that basically causes trouble and disrupts the activities of the city and property damage. So the police always have this issue of a delicate balance that they have to do. Uh, I agree with the AFL-CIO people that there were an awful lot of police around. Uh, but I also wrote, remember that they were planning for thousands when they actually ended up with hundreds. Uh, and we'll never know what might have occurred had actually the thousands showed up. But in our last uh, meeting that we had at the University of Tampa, I closed with remarks that, and kind of directed them toward Chief Bennett and uh, Jim Schimberg and said, overall, you've got a bad ordinance. Uh, the things are going to work in ways that you didn't anticipate. None of these things are going to go the way you think they did. And the way that you're going to be successful is to be flexible. And I will tell you that I saw a great deal of flexibility on the part of the police uh, and the people and the officials in the city of Tampa. Uh, I got a lot of credit on the website for that middle class, melting middle class thing. Uh, all I did was when they contacted the ACLU, they wanted us to go to court and get an injunction to allow them to change the date. I said, no, what I ought to do is probably call Jim Schimberg and see if there's something we can work out. And the fact of the matter is, he called the right people in the city, uh, Parks and Recreation Department, every special events group. Uh, we had a little meeting on the street down on a Saturday morning. Everybody kind of agreed on the uh, sharing the park with another demonstration that was already there. Uh, I didn't do anything. I just called Jim. Jim called the right people. Everybody met. Everything was resolved and it was taken care of and the middle class melted away right before our eyes during the course of the afternoon. Uh, it was pretty interesting to see that that worked out that well. Uh, and I think that is because the city of Tampa exercised the necessary degree of flexibility to make it work. It was kind of depressing to be downtown and see the numbers of police. But I think if you were downtown, you found out that the total numbers of police that were evident kind of declined in the, set, in the third and fourth day of the convention when it became obvious that we had kind of overplanned uh, for the possibilities of how many demonstrators and so forth might be around. Uh, I will tell you that I don't think we have received a single complaint that anybody who came to Tampa to demonstrate and have their say didn't get it. And I think that also applies uh, to the Lawyers Guild who were there in fluorescent green hats watching what was going on uh, because I talk to them every day. I think I talked to probably Chief Bennett and Chief Castor every day. I saw Jim Schimberg uh, and his staff all over the place downtown uh, and we communicated freely on the street. Uh, I do share with Jim the kind of the irony where all of a sudden one day the labor union demonstration was actually going on the parade route, was going down to the public viewing area, and all of a sudden on the side of the barriers were all these Republican delegates and their paraphernalia walking down there beside the, uh, the labor union parade that was going on, and everybody kind of got along well and it worked out. Uh, so I think that's really the big lesson around here, is the idea that the police at heart uh, were probably overcommitted in terms of their resources uh, in the area, but they were there to provide safety, and they were there and it allowed the demonstrators to pretty much go where they wanted to go, have their say. Uh, I commented at the last thing we did on the, the, the uh, puppet issue, and said we might have something to say about that. Our problem and our dilemma from the ACLU standpoint was that the, the recommendation might have been to let the demonstrators go ahead and have puppets if they would agree to let the police make sure they weren't using them for contraband. And sure enough, 
the problem with that, of course, is that it would be sacrificing a Fourth Amendment right to exercise a First Amendment right. Uh, we weren't quite sure what to do, but we made that suggestion publicly to the police and to the demonstrators, and that big Romney head that they were carrying around actually, I understand, was examined by the police beforehand to make sure that there was no contraband in there, and they were allowed to have their puppet carry it around the streets and do what they wanted to do. I think the demonstrators exercised some flexibility and some restraint. I also think that the tone did change. Uh, early on, the, the mayor was quoted about acting decisively in terms of the demonstrations and things like that. But as we came down toward the event, there was much more of an interest, and I know Chief Bennett made that clear in our last meeting at the University of Tampa, is that part of the police's job was to make sure that the people got to exercise their First Amendment rights, and in fact, they did. I'd like to make a couple of comments uh, on the uh, thing. One is that every time I was downtown and there was a demonstration going on and I was watching it, uh, the police that were there were not only there in large numbers, but they were also there with adult supervision. Every time they were there, senior police leadership were on hand to make sure that nothing got out of hand. And I think that says an awful lot about the way things work. That might not work in every city, but I had great confidence, generally speaking, that the police in the city of Tampa would be there. I was a little worried about the people from the outside uh, who were coming in to augment, but apparently their training worked. Every time I saw a policeman, they were happy, they were friendly, they waved, they smiled, uh, and they didn't really, uh, they took some crap along the way. I saw some of that, uh, and they didn't let it bother them. They kind of let that roll off their back.